Mark, it's County reporting. Where are we today? Ah. On Columbus Day, we're visiting Christopher Columbus. There he is. There is the man, the myth, the legend. Right? We're going to try to try to clear the air on Christopher Columbus today. Uh, scapegoating. Scapegoating for the hate. There he is, Christopher. So uh, here in Central Park, there's a lot of people taking pictures here. I'm trying to keep them out of my picture. Keep them out of my frame. So, you got a little jazz band going on too. Oh, blueberry. So that's the original statue that was put here by the Italians <laughs> in the 18, uh, 1890s, I believe. I, I think it was out on Columbus Circle uh, for a while, but uh, that's the original statue. And you notice that there's a cop car right behind uh, them to, to fight off the vandals because Christopher Columbus is so evil. He's such an evil man. What did he do? I thought he discovered the new world. I thought he was the great explorer, Christopher Columbus. But now he's a racist and a misogynist and a whore and a slave owner. <laughs> that shit is crazy, man. This shit is dope. So let's talk about Christopher Columbus. Stop skating, scapegoating. Let's stop scapegoating Christopher Columbus. What do you say? So uh, today is the big parade. There's a Columbus Day parade down the block. We'll take a look. Let's say hello to... Uh, this is uh, William Shakespeare. William Shakespeare here in the mall, in uh, right in the center of Central Park, where all the poets are. Poets Row, right? All the poets are here, and um, these are the uh, the Dutch elm trees, Dutch elm trees of uh, Central Park. They've been kind of immune to the uh, to the bug, the elm. You know the bug that eats them? The Dutch elm disease bug? It can't get into Central Park. You know why? Because the flight is too expensive. <laughs> so, so let's talk about, let's talk about Christopher Columbus in a second. Right? So, so 1451, Christopher Columbus is born in Italy. Right? He's born somewhere in Italy, right? He's born in a, he's born in Italian. Actually, in the little islands, they believe, what is now Sardinia, uh, owned by Italy and uh, Corsica in the Mediterranean, is where they believed Christopher Columbus was born. And he did his bidding, his sailing, his exploring, not for the Italians, but for initially the Portuguese and the Spaniards as part of the expansion of the Spanish Empire to explore to find a way west to get to China. <laughs> they were trying to find China, going west, because they believed, they, they were quite sure that the earth was round and that if they went west, they would come up on the other side of China to find a silk path and such, right? So, fascinating story, right? So Christopher Columbus is now the fall guy for the sins of slavery. But he never owned slaves. He never owned slaves. But it's Christopher Columbus. He never owned a slave, right? Uh, and uh, he's, uh, you know, and the exploitation of the indigenous people. What indigenous people? What the Bahamas? He landed in the Bahamas. One guy with a, one guy with three ships. The Nina, the Pinta, the Santa Maria on the first exploration. Right? Exploring the great, the great divide. Exploring, stepping out into the world. Stepping out into the world, trying to explore what's on the other side of that, that great ocean that we know about. Right? Right? Well, expo exploration, exploitation. The rape of natural resources and most of the legal, financial, and territorial abuses that followed. Right? That followed the Europeans here. Right? Now, that's the, the essence. See, Christopher Columbus encompasses the essence of exploration. Um, the immigrant experience, right? The immigrant experience to, to boldly go where nobody has gone before, to see something that nobody saw, right? right? And, and of course profit from it. Of course that was the motive of the Spaniards. The Spanish kings and the Portuguese kings didn't give 
Columbus, you know, three ships and a, you know, and a, and a couple of, you know, and enough money to cruise across the sail, literally across the Atlantic, right? for nothing. They had a, they had a profit motive, right? And what was their profit motive, right? You know, the, the resources there. And Christopher Columbus actually had a 10% interest in anything that he found as part of the exploration, right? So, it'll make sense in a second. Let's just bear with it. Let's get the background out of the way. Maybe we'll talk to some angry people. I don't see many of them up here. People are just listening to the music. So, so Christopher Columbus, he, he's a 15th century guy a 15th century guy getting tried in a 19th century court. Right? Not long ago, they wanted to tear all this down. They wanted to tear down the statue and replace it with a statue of indigenous people respect. Huh? It's not way that we don't respect indigenous people. That's ridiculous. <laughs> Whatever they are, right? Indians or whoever. The real deal is... is that that was then and this is now right there's columbus 100 years later and you need a cop to prevent people from spray painting them and attacking the statue that's what the cops are there for because it already happened in new york right a bunch of kooks went over there and spray painted the sign spray painted the, the statue and they also tried to there was a lobby here in new york city to take the statue down because columbus was a all these things that don't make sense, right? He was an explorer, right? right? He worked for the king of Portugal. Um, right? So, so to vilify him, right? That's what happened, he got vilified, why? Because the kooks on the left need a scapegoat, right? C Columbus, right? He's the, the guy, I'll tell you the Italian connection as well, because there really isn't any. Not a, not a significant one anyway. I'm gonna walk. It's too distracting. <laughs> so, so here in Central Park, I head down to uh, by where the parade is, down to um, the Plaza Hotel, where the horses are. So, Christopher Columbus, 15th century man in a 20th century trial, trial by idiot left activists that don't know history. What did Christopher Columbus do? I don't know. He enslaved people. And he, he, he enslaved the indigenous people. Now, there's some truth to that. In the end of his career, in the final um, voyage, he made four trips. Christopher Columbus made four trips across the Atlantic Ocean, which was a revelation at the time, which was just an amazing feat that, that guys in, you know, in sailboats, he was a master, um, a master explorer and quite arguably didn't even know that the mainland continental United States was even there at the time. Right? They landed in the Bahamas, the piece of property um, from the tip of Cuba all the way over to, um, I guess, the tip of the Virgin Islands all the way out in the ocean, right? That's where Columbus explored. And he also went into the Gulf of Mexico. He touched down, I believe, in, in Trinidad. He, Columbia, right? Columbus, Columbia. Right? It's named after him. Right, so he explored pretty much the Gulf of what we now call the Gulf of Mexico, and those you know those um, uh, regions there, and never actually touched down on uh, you know Florida, what we call Florida, and uh, the east coast of the United States. Never did, right? But somehow he brought slavery to the coast. <laughs> so, so and vilifying him, vilifying him is not going to change. The unfairness of history. That's what I really, really wanted to say is that. Right? So, so the, the idea, let's, let's look at the argument that Columbus is a, uh, was a slave owner. The fact is he never owned slaves. Right? There's a theory that he had one slave or one indentured person on the boat with him when he came over. But that can't be verified. And even if it was, on his second trip from Spain, they'd come over from Portugal, right, the tip of, well, I guess, what was Spain at the time, and they go to the Canary Islands, they stop over, 
and then they make the blast across the Atlantic Ocean, right? And on his second trip, there were 1,200 men, 17 ships and 1,200 men. Not the simple Nina Pinta Santa Maria. Once they proved that there was land there, they went back to Spain and got more manpower, right? And then they sailed across the Atlantic for the second time, and a lot of those 1,200 people stayed. They were priests. They were, um, they were people promoting the religion, the economy, the way of government on the West Indy people. Now, there were already millions of people there in the West Indies. So the idea that Columbus was some kind of tyrant or some kind of um, some sort of you know, emperor of the West Indies is relatively ridiculous because he was, although he had governing power, empowering him from the king of Portugal and Spain or whoever those guys were, they gave him a 10% interest in the governorship. But he in no way really controlled much. That's the lie, right? Yeah, they abused some people, but that's what they did back then. And in the end of his life, he was kind of delirious and crazy. His eyes were bleeding. He was having heart attacks. He died, I believe, at 51 years old or something, Columbus. So he wasn't a relatively healthy person. Horse break. What's up, horse? Hello. Hello. I'm sorry. I'm in your way. <laughs> Almost got hit by a horse. <laughs> I'm horsing around. <laughs> so, um, take a look at the rock. Give you the view of the bridge. Give the, <laughs> I said bridge. Give you the view of the buildings. Beautiful buildings. Well, maybe not so, but it's breathtaking anyway when you see it. You ready for your breath? Hold your breath, because this is breathtaking. All right, I'm going to do a pan around. Oh, fucking look at this shit. Ah, New York skyline. Isn't that intense? That's Central Park West. That's some of the wealthiest. Some of the wealthiest of the wealthiest live there. We did a good thing, right? I mean, Columbus came over, you know, and... Right? Did we do such a bad thing? The Westerners, the people that came here and expanded into new territories and multiplied like crazy? I don't know. <laughs> what do I know? I'm just a guy with a... Just a guy walking around the park. For Christ's sake. Oh, you want to see Trump... Uh, they're getting Trump's ice skating rink ready. Ready for this? <laughs> so, Trump... You heard of him. He's the president of the United States. He still owns a ice skating rink here in the in Central Park. Now, I'm up on a ledge over here, so I don't want to fall off the goddamn ledge. But there's the ice skating rink. It used to be called Wallman Rink. And it was uh, Trump. It had Trump's name on it. I think they took his name off. Well, it's an ice skating rink. They're going to fill it up and do some ice skating. So let's get back to Columbus on his on his holiday, on the great American holiday where everybody takes a break, takes off to celebrate the man, the myth, the legend, where some people want to get rid of his holiday. And why? What did he do? I still haven't found any evidence that he was, he's the things that they say he was. He's the scapegoat for the, for the left's insanity. He's crazy. He's a racist. Oh, my God. Oh my God, he's a racist. <laughs> Who knows, man? You know, nobody was there. It's 500 years ago. Shit changes. You see how quick things change and perception changes? Hey, listen, people owned each other back then. If you were poor, you can get indentured to someone who was rich. That's just the way it was. It's still like that in parts of the country, certainly in, you know, in Southeast Asia and in, in India, parts of Africa. It's still like that, you know? So what are you complaining about? Why don't you go fix it now? You're still here. You're complaining about Christopher Columbus fucking 800, 500 years ago. It doesn't even make sense anymore. Okay? So so Columbus, he, he crosses the ocean four times, right? And, um, you know, he had the, his, you know, audacity and vision um, revolutionized the human migration, right? That's what he's remembered for because he was a great explorer, Right? And sure, they did seed Western civilization on his second trip. 
his second of four trips, they seeded the American, not the American, but the European Western idea of politics and governing ship and Christianity. Right? So you should, guys should be celebrating that. At least he spread Christianity, right? If you're a Christian, you should like that. Right? But why vilify him? Why vilify Columbus? That's what I want to find out today. Maybe I'll talk to some people that want to vilify him. Because I, I, I can't, I don't know. I can't figure it out myself because I'm, you know, I'm stupid. And I'm, I'm too, I'm a communist and a socialist. <laughs> All right. So what else do I want to say about this? Oh, Columbus. So why, why did the Italians love Christopher Columbus? Because Christopher Columbus came from, he was born in Italy, as I said, probably uh, what we now call Sardinia, which is an island in the Mediterranean, right? And um, so in the 1800s, in the late 1800s, as the Italian immigrants came to the United States, they experienced the usual experience of a new people coming to a new culture. Immigrant shock. Ah, fuck these people. It's kind of the equivalent of the way the Mexicans are treated and the Ecuadorians. And you barely speak the language and you get a little abuse, right? That's just the way it is. You know, get over yourself, right? And the Italians prevailed, but there was one particular incident that happened in New Orleans where 11, where 11 Italians were lynched. You heard about this? I'm, I'm sure if you're from New Orleans, you've heard about it. But so the actual, the, the greatest lynching in American history wasn't whites on blacks. It was actually the, the people of New Orleans, whatever they were, lynching Italians. 11 people got lynched. Innocent Italians got lynched. And in New Orleans and there went the idea of putting a statue right the Italians put a statue of Christopher Columbus as a kind of a savior say see see there's a great Italian look what he did Uh, that's what they did and he became the Italian savior now I'm Italian and I grew up Italian and there is some sort of some sort of connection there I guess but not really. I mean, it's kind of a very, very... He was more of an explorer than he was a, a, uh, an Italian. He grew up in Spain. He spoke Spanish. Or whatever the language was. And we don't even know if the language at the time was what we think of as Italian. Whatever. Right? It's all far-reaching. It's all, it doesn't really make sense when you hold trial 500 years later on a person. You see the point? But the Italians love him nonetheless. And they said... To the statue that you just saw, to the world, we gave a world. To the world, we gave a world. In other words, to the old world, we gave you the new world. Is what Columbus said. Right? And the Italians champion that. Right? They still champion it today. So, Mark Sconti reporting from the uh, Central Park up here in the uh, coming down toward down toward sea level now. <laughs> How long are we going here? Oh, 18 minutes. So we're gonna the, again. There's a parade today, and maybe we'll try to talk to some people. Some people that feel like Columbus. They wanted to take all these monuments down. The kooky left wanted to destroy history on the notion that that he was a slave owner Columbus and he brought tyranny to the indigenous people of the time now listen if you want to if you want to say that every immigration idea every everyone who immigrates ultimately grows into strength and tries to take a little piece of their own right now the Europeans were extremely greedy in their in their reach, no doubt, but it took hundreds of years before it settled in. So what I'm saying is that we are all immigrants, no matter where you're from. Whether it was 500 years ago, I just stepped in horseshit. <laughs> I was trying to avoid it, but I stepped right in it. Fucking flies and everything. But we are all immigrants. We all came from somewhere, somewhere else, right? Where did we come from? Where did you, I, you know, my grandparents came from Italy, the real Italy, today's Italy, modern Italy, or at least 100 years ago's Italy. And, um, want to see the horse? 
You know, I, where'd the horse come from? The horse doesn't have any say. The fucking guy, horse works all day long. He's got to eat for a bowl of oats. He makes all, he makes all the money, and he gets a fucking bucket of oats. You know what I'm saying? So, so we are all immigrants of this great nation, this 250-year-old nation, 45-year-old, whatever it is, right? And, and so was Columbus. Is the point? He came over. He came. He saw. He went. He came back with force. Seventeen boats, twelve hundred men, left them there to 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 uh, populate and and integrate and and you know and capitalize, make money on the West Indies. Now, again, that's all Christopher Columbus is is a great explorer of that time. Where in the hell does does the does the other stuff come in? Right? Where do you make an argument? The only argument you can make is that the indigenous people are fighting for something. They want something. They believe reparation. You took it from us, we want it back. <laughs> that kind of that kind of mentality, is that what it really is? Are you rightfully deserving of it? Are you deserving of it? Wow. Sorry about that. I didn't even see you, man. I almost stepped on. I, I almost got stepped on. <laughs> that was close. That was a close call, man. Almost got whacked by a horse. <laughs> so, so I hope that was helpful. And I hope you won't spend your holiday dissing on Christopher Columbus, the great Italian explorer who wasn't really from Italy. <laughs> <laughs> who, who was supposed to be a slave owner but never owned a slave and was a racist but had but was just promoting the European ethos on the world spreading the European thing around why hate on him so that's a uh, some kind of Pulitzer I don't even know what, what uh, monument that is but you see the big black building right there um that one. This one right here. La 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 la. That's Trump Tower. And uh, there might be some action there. I don't think so. I don't think so. Plaza Hotel where uh, where uh, Home Alone 2. You remember Home Alone 2 where <laughs> what was it? Uh, Colleen McCollin comes running out of there with Joe Pesci chasing him in the hallway. Trump, Trump was in that movie too. Plaza Hotel, $800 a night to stay there. You want to stay? Calvin Klein. Not Calvin Klein. Um, yeah, Tommy Helfinger. Tommy Helfinger lives there. You could see him once in a while. Come out the building. Hey, Tommy, got your pants on. <laughs> ah, New York, loving it. So enjoy your Christopher Columbus Day. Chris is a great, uh, great American figure, a great historical figure. Let's not change history. Let's move forward. Let's look forward. Right? And see see how we can affect the future. You know, global warming. We came we've come a long way, you know what I mean? That trip from Portugal now is a you could you could have a you could have a little drink on a plane and you you go you go up, you fall asleep, you come down, you're in you're in the you know you know, you're in the, the new world, right? We've come a long way, but why destroy the history of a great, a great pioneer, right? The, the, you know, why destroy that? Why not embrace it and say, this is what we were, and this is who we've become, and this might be who we can be in the future. Maybe single-payer health care for all, right? Maybe, maybe move, advance rather than, um, rather than recede. Right? Rather than de-evolve, evolve. Right? It's evolution of thought. I think it's very shallow to think that having, having, what, having said what I just said, to think that Christopher Columbus should be shamed in this day and age is valid, I think is very, 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 very narrow and um, short-sighted. Marcus Conti reporting here from... Central Park, where the parade will be in an hour or so. Peace out.